All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College Application and Website Development, or AWD 1100 Programming Fundamentals with C-Sharp Class, I've been going through a series of, or creating a series of videos based off of the PowerPoint slides for the textbook for the class, that being Murox C-Sharp 7th Edition. So, so far, Oops, I have gone through and done the first five chapters. And I decided good, bad, or indifferent, I did this chapter a little bit differently. And what I did was I did the, I went back and rewrote a program, all right, and uh, the change program to go and add methods to it. And I've already finished that particular um, part two of this, let's say. And now I'm doing the part one. Unfortunately, at the end of part two, I said, now I'm going to go in and do the lecture for chapter five, where I meant to say, I'm going to do the lecture for chapter six. No biggie. So let's get going. Let's get into it right now. So here's our cover page. So as you can see, it's how to code methods and event handlers. And as always, we have our applied objectives and our knowledge objectives. So our applied objectives, basically, as it says here, is to um, learn how to write methods. Now, what I did last time was I started to do the actual lecture, but then it was like, boy, I got so engrossed in the chapter that, or in the, the program, that I just went right into the program. So this is on how to write methods. Okay. Describe the signature of a method. We'll talk about that. Describe an expression-bodied method. Talk about the difference between passed by argument and passed by value or reference. Passed by value or argument by reference and argument by value. Talk about optional arguments. Passing by name. Tuples, which we'll talk very little about. And talk about wiring. Now, I'm going to do this, and maybe I'm going to rule that I'm doing it like this, but I'm going to I'm going to kind of show you something here. All right, let me get rid of all this. Now, what we've been writing in the past is one big routine in our calculate routine. So in our calculate routine, we did all of the calculations that had to be done. So imagine for a second, just imagine, that we've got something like this, and this is at the end of the chapter here. So let me get into it here. And I'm going to go right back. This is slide four, but I'm going to go all the way to the end. And imagine this calculator. So let me bring this up. And as I've been doing, great. Now it's not letting me go back and do that, but oh my goodness. All right. Wow. There we go. All right. So imagine that we were writing this program right here. This calculator. Okay. This. So if we put in this for number one, this for our operation, and this for operate, operand number two. If we click calculate, we get this answer. Now, hopefully that made sense. But the thing is, what if we wanted to have five operations? Okay, in other words, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and modulo. And we didn't know at the beginning exactly what numbers people were going to put in. And we want to handle it so that if somebody puts in a zero here and it's a divider or a modulo, that the result here should just say something like illegal divide or something like that. So what we could do, this is called operand one and operand two, okay? Is imagine we came in here. So in our, I'm in our buttons click event, let's say. And I, I type in here int, I mean, we'll make it a double, double. 
operand one equal, and let's just do a convert dot two double txt operand one dot text. Okay, so we're grabbing that first number. That should make sense. Okay. And then we'll have the same thing for operand two. Now I'm not worrying right now about this checking for errors or not, you know, no input or anything. I'm just walk through walking you through this. Now I'm going to say double sum equal operand one plus operand two. All right, I'm going to put a space there. You'll know why in a second. Now, grab this line, put it in there five times. This will be diff, it'll be operand one minus operand two. This will be the product, so it'll be operand one times operand two. This will be the quotient, and this will be the mod. Now, a couple things we're going to have to change right away. We don't want to just go in and willy-nilly, willy-nilly rather, do these two operations. I don't want to do those. And what I'm saying is, if those things are zero, I don't want to do the division. But what if I came down here and I wrote new routines? So I'm going to say here, private, double, and I'm going to call this return sum. Okay, and I'm going to pass in a double for number one and a double for number two. Now, that's operand one and that's operand two. We, can, we don't have to call them that. We could have called them operand one and operand two again, but now all I have to type in here is return n1 plus n2. So that's, that's a whole routine that I've just written. Now this sum changes to return sum, and I pass into it operand 1 and operand 2. You can probably guess already where I'm going with this. So now we can have return diff, and this will be a minus. And then this will be return diff operand one. Come on, operand one <clears throat> and operand two. Then down here, this will be called return prod for product. And it'll be return n1 times n2, which means that this will now be return prod with operand 1 and operand 2. Now, we've got two to go here. And I skipped one accidentally, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Or else I just removed it. I don't know. We had the quotient that was here before, too. All right. Now, these are a little bit different. Because I only want to do them if it's zero. All right. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write two more of these routines. And it'll actually be the same routine. I'll just change the symbol once. So this will be called return the quotient. Now, I don't want to just do this. Instead, I want to be able to come in here and say, if n2 is equal to 0, I don't want to do the calculation. So what I'll say is txt answer equal illegal attempt or illegal divide. All right. And then I'll just return. 0, 0.0. 
I could return basically anything. All right. But here, if it if I get down to here, it worked. So now I can do the divide. And I'm going to do the same exact thing here. But this will be return mod. There. So now this becomes return return quotient with operand one and operand two. And finally, this one becomes return mod with operand one and operand two. Now you may look at that and at first view, you may say, well, what did that really buy us? Well, what we're doing is, you know, in a way, and this is the, the, the kind of way that in many, many times I go over programming. It's like learning to write an outline, all right, where you go from very general to very specific. We were putting everything together. But now we're going to take, so if this is our, this is going to be our calculate button click routine. All right. That's going from there to here. And then here's our sum. Here's our difference. But notice now we've got very small routines and we're delegating the authority here. These are what are called function or method calls. The, as far as the difference between methods and functions, you don't have to worry about those until chapter 12. All right. But what we're doing is basically we are writing routines because the idea is it, it's kind of like this. <clears throat> Imagine that I start my own business and I'm going to make widgets, whatever widgets are. And I make them out of my house. All right. So I go and I make a hundred of them and I put them online. And I'm thinking, you know, if I'm lucky, one or two will sell or maybe 10 or maybe all of them will sell. Well, within seconds, everyone is sold and I've got orders for a thousand more. So I don't have room in my house. So I go into my garage. I take out my cars and now I've got room for about 10,000 widgets. So I get those done. I put those out. Now I've got 100,000 people who want widgets. So what I do is I rent a warehouse and in that warehouse I start making my widgets the problem is I can't make that many widgets that fast so I hire a bunch of people to make widgets for me I also hire a person to come in and clean the place clean the warehouse up but then I have a problem with the plumbing so I have to hire a plumber as well so what am I doing over time, I'm delegating authority. That's what you end up doing in programs. All right. So this, there's an example right here. This is an example of a method. It doesn't require any information to do its thing. So that's why you need the parentheses. Now, what they do in here is they take their methods and they always give them a capital letter to begin with. I give mine a lowercase. It's no real big difference. All right, again, agree with one or agree with the other and do it that way. This method doesn't return anything, so its return type is set as void. The private and public, don't worry about that again. That's what chapter 12, starting in chapter 12, that's what it's all about. All right, and I don't want you to get so hung up on this stuff that you're totally confused. So here we've got a private method called disable buttons. It returns nothing and it has nothing passed into it. Here, we've got a method called get discount percent. In order to do its thing, we have to pass in a subtotal and it's going to return a decimal. So notice there's a return statement here, but since we aren't returning anything, there's no return statement here. All right, okay. You can have and pass in as many parameters 
into a method as you need to pass in. So here we're passing in a decimal for an investment, a decimal for an interest rate, and an integer for months. And we have to return a decimal. So this future value here, this thing that we're returning, must be the same type as this. Just like decimal, decimal. Nothing, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, it's a little bit different way of looking at things. They use the this parameter, which is not necessary. But when we are calling these, when you want this to happen, you call this routine called calculate future value. And you pass in these three things. Or you call this routine called discount get discount percent and you pass in this. Or you call the routine called disable buttons and you pass in nothing. And that's what they're showing here. Now, when you go into call a method, the IntelliSense will kick in, which is kind of neat. All right. All right. Now, in here, we've got what are called optional parameters. What does that mean? That means that if you, this is a mandatory parameter, you must pass in an investment. If you don't pass in an interest rate, it assumes that it's 5%. If you don't pass in a number of months, it assumes that it's 12. So the optional means if you don't pass the thing in, it's going to optionally get a value. And if that confuses you, think of it this way. Let's imagine that Rankin Technical College, in their infinite wisdom, decides that they're going to hire me to write a program to redo their registration system. And when I do that, I have to get information from anybody who registers. Name, address, city, state, zip, etc. Well, the majority of people who go to Rankin Technical College are from Missouri. And because of that, I could put in here string state equals double quote Missouri double quote. So if you didn't enter a state, it would default to Missouri as an example. All right. So when you have this, you can call these in different ways. And again, my idea right now is just to, I, I'm deluging you with probably way too much info to begin with. So I'm going to hold off and we'll go over this in class in much more depth and breadth of coverage. All right. You can put as many lines of code inside of the body of a method, which is between the curly braces, as you want to put in or need to put in. Notice this display error message. This is like the show message that I wrote earlier. All right. And when you use these, you can use that discard again. with the switch in this example. All right, so this is a button click. And again, what we're going to do, they're, they're gonna talk about refactoring in here and the fact that you can refactor. So you can take, if you've got everything inside of your buttons calculate click event, you can take it and take it out of there. So the stuff in yellow here, what they're going to do is they're going to take that and write it, write it in its own method. And that's what they've done in here. Now, there are ways of doing this <clears throat> where you can refactor. I didn't want to show this because I've had limited success with this. And I just as soon move it around myself. But you can read the steps in there and we can go through it in class. I'm not going to say any more about it right now. All right. So they, now they've got this thing, and let's talk about ref. If, it, all right, right now I am housed out of the Rankin Technical College that is in Wentzville, Missouri. The address of the building that I'm in is 751 Par Road, okay? Now imagine that it's five years from now. And Rankin moves out because they need a bigger building. Well, if someone else moves in here, the address will still be 751 Par Road. The difference is the contents 
will change or the people inhabiting the building or whatever you want to say that will change so why am i telling you this if you pass a value in as a ref value if you pass it in as a ref value any change you make is a permanent change but if you pass a simple value like this in and it's not a ref value then even if you change it in here once you go back, it'll revert back to its original value. And if you say, I don't get that, you'll have to see it in action for it to make some sense. And I'll try to show you some examples in just a moment. Okay. All right. Here's that future value. And there's an out parameter also, which we've actually looked at already a little bit. But we'll go back to that too in just a minute. So this is all about their future value part that we've talked about so far and it's totally fine but we're going to use a, a different example because i think the example is easier all right the tuples i'm going to hold off on until we get to it in class because again it's a little bit confusing so i'm going to get okay so that gets us all the way to here so we're already 27 slides in and we're only 21 minutes in that's good because i'm going to rewrite this calculator program in just a moment right in front of your very eyes and i'm going to grab the code that we put in here and see if i can put it in the program and hardly make any changes whatsoever okay all right so the next thing that's discussed in here then is the event list for a text box control well there's different events that every control can respond to so far the only code we put or the only events we've uh, associated code with have been button clicks but i you know for example if i have a text box and it says enter your first name your complete first name when for my case it's jeffrey j-e-f-f-r-e-y well with this text changed event every time i enter in another character it's going to basically have another change event take place. So if I type in J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, seven text changed events will take place. So I can put code in there. Why is that important? The reason that that's important is you'll see this later too. Well, what if I only want to allow numbers or if I only want to allow letters in a text box? This is one way we'll be able to handle that. All right. We can write our own event handlers as well. And that's what I've started showing you in the next lecture. All right. How to select an existing event handler? Well, let's just show you on here. So if I were, I'll go back and grab here. This is the, the, the one that I did for the, the next one. So you, you come in here and you type in, I don't know, 147. And how many quarters is that? Well, five quarters, it'd be 125 and two dimes and two cents. So five quarters is 125 plus 20 is 145 plus two is 147. All right. So what does that have to do with anything? Well, when I bring this back up, I didn't show you that, but <clears throat> for instance, we've gone to our button event here and every time we've done that and we've come in here put that in double clicked on it but if i click over here on this lightning bolt these are all the different events that a button can respond to there's probably 20 or 30 of them if not more in here the only one we're responding to right now is the click event all right, but we can respond to anything we want to respond to or need to respond to. For instance, let's click on the load on the form. And you'll notice that the form, as an example, all right, it's got a click event. See that? So if I double click on this, no pun intended, there's my click event. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in a message box dot show and the it, it, it'll just say you clicked on on the 
form. And that is in the form click event. And again, I'll just put in a button that'll say dot OK. And this isn't an error. So for the icon, I'll put dot information because it is, it's information. So, with all that in there, let's just run the program again. And now, it still works. It, everything's cool, but when I click on here, if I put in 456, still works, etc. Notice what happens if I click on the form. Okay, it's responding to an event. You clicked on the form. So, there's all sorts of, literally, if I want to, I can put code in here when I do stuff with labels, text boxes, buttons, and other controls we haven't even dealt with yet. Now I'm going to take this, and I don't really want that to run, so I'm going to comment out that code. Okay? But just to show you what can happen. All right, let me continue on. So this is called wiring up an event handler. Now, they're going to go through this. This isn't going to pay to go through this with you now. We'll have to do this in class. And I'm not trying to shirk my responsibilities. It's just that it'll make a lot more sense. So let's write this. All right, I don't know if I saved this or not. I really don't remember. So let's see. Yes, I have it. Good. Okay. So... I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do my file save all. I want to quit. I shouldn't have quit, but that's okay. I'm going to grab this change calculator methods and throw that in there. Uh, that's fine. Cancel it. It'll work in just a second. All right, and I'm going to start up Visual Studio again. I'm again going to create a new project. It will again be a Windows Form project. Next. And I'm going to call this, what, did, what was it called here? Simple Calculator. So this will be simple. Try it again. Simple Calculator GUI. And the project will be just Simple Calculator. Okay, click Create. I don't want to waste a lot of my time or your time, so I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to do this right away, and I'm going to bring this up. Why? Because I want to build this. So again, simple calculator, one, two, three, four, four uh, labels, four text boxes, one of which is read only, the others aren't, two buttons. I'm going to put a third button in here for a clear button. So let me make this interface right in front of you here. So come over to here. Let's change the name of our form. Oops, I don't want that. I want to rename. So FRM Simple Calculator. Yes, I want to save that. Come over to here. We will change our text in there from Form 1 to Simple Calculator. All right, so that's done. Let's quickly go in. I'll do it a little bit different order this time. Put in my buttons. All right, then next let's put in our text boxes.
I don't remember if there were three or four of them, or four or five of them, I should say. So let's look. One, two, three, four. Good. All right, so that's all done. In fact, let's give them even more room. All right, now let's put in our labels. As always, I like to come in and right away auto change the auto size to false on my label. There's that. And I pretty much now have my interface built. Let's change my sizes on here so you're able to see it a little bit better. So under font, as I have done several times in here, set that to 18. Set it to bold. All right. Let's go with these right here and make these a little wider there. All right, so let's go here. What do we have? We got ju we're just about done with the interface, but I've got to rename everything. All right, so this will be calculate, btn calculate, and it will have the text on there of calculate. This will be clear. Oops. This will be clear. With a name of BTN clear. And finally, this will be exit. And it will have, whoops, it will be BTN exit with the text exit. Let's go in and very quickly, let's go in and lock our interface. There we go. So, the, as far as the names, We've got operand one, operator, operand two, and result. Let's start here. We'll make this result. And it will become LBL result. All right, we'll also change this right away to TXT result. All right, this will become TXT operand two. This will become LBL operand, oops, operand 2, and the text in there will be operand 2. We'll put a semi or a colon in there. This will be operand 1 with a colon, and whoops, well, that was a little screwed up. There we go. And it will be LBL operand. And I, of course, I screwed this up. So that's operand two. This is operator. So this will be LBL operator. And this will be TXT operator. And the text that's in here will be operator. All right, this will be LBL operand one. And the text on there will be operand one. All right, we're just about finished. Let's pretty it up just a little bit here. Why? just because we can. So I'm going to set the background color, make it a yellow. That's not too awful. And let's take these and let's move them over so that they're middle right. That looks a little nicer. And these we will center. All right. And finally, we will do our default location to be center screen. Now, I want to show you, I purposely put these in here in a different order. Why? Because I want to do my view tab order. And right now, it's not the order that I want. I want 0, 1, 
two, this will be read only, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and another view tab order. So that's all fixed now. All right, now let's think about what we want to do. First, let's make this one read only. So my read only property, it's now there it is. So when I clear, I want this to clear, this to clear, this to clear, this to clear, and I want that to have the focused. All right, so I, I like to just do it in this order, so I'm going to double click on that. But now, instead of putting all that code in here, maybe there's other stuff I'll want to do later. So I'm going to call out this, I'm going to call this clear all fields and set focus. Now I get an error because that hasn't been written yet. All right, but I'm going to come in here and say private void, and there it is. And what do I want to do? I want to say txt operand. Oh, I didn't rename the one, so let me rename that. Yep, I left that as text box one. My bad. So that's txt operand one. Let's double check all of our names in here. Looks good to me. All right. So when I clear, I want to say txt operand1.txt equals double quote, double quote, txt operand2.txt equals double quote, double quote. In between those two was the operator, txt. Again, you can do these in any order. And I think we call it, it was a txt result. Yep. Equals double quote, double quote. And finally, txt operand one dot focus. Now, it didn't buy us a whole heck of a lot, but rather than doing this, inside by clicking the button we're now calling a routine and you might say yeah I, I get that but why did you even do that because later on one of the things that we'll look at is how we can come in here and add a menu up here maybe we want to be able to calculate both or clear using the menu or the button as of right now we can't do that all right or we can do that because we've got a separate routine so let's clear do all this and I'll write clear and everything looks good for exit you already know this because I've shown it to you several times but let's come down here and I'm going to come in here again and type in exit button and I'm going to grab that code for the exit button there it is Here we go. All right. Now, what we want to allow the user to do, there's better ways of doing this than what I'm about to show you. What I'd like to show you right now is a new control that we're gonna, we can put in here that will allow us to have a plus, a minus, etc. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to further complicate this program. So what I'm going to do is this thing that's called TXT operator. All right, when you calculate, I'm going to do this. I'm going to call um, I'm going to call uh, oh, this is going to be kind of ugly, but it'll work. So I'm going to come in here and do my bool, keep going, and I'm going to set it equal to true. In fact, I'll set it equal to um, is operand not empty? Okay, and I'm going to pass in a one. If this may make no sense, don't worry about it if it doesn't. All right, then if keep going is true, okay. Again, I'm going to get a bunch of errors in here. Don't worry about that. I'm going to say keep going equal 
is operand numeric. And I'll pass in a one. All right. Else return. Okay. All right. Finally, I'm going to have to do the same thing. I don't have to check for ranges here. I'm going to allow positive and negative numbers. Totally fine. So I'm going to come in here and do this. In fact, let me grab this. It's going to look a little funky for a minute, so don't worry about it. Well, got a lot of that done pretty quickly. Now, what am I doing here? I want to check whether the operand is empty, and I want to check whether or not the operand is numeric. But I want to do that twice. Once for what's in here and once for what's in there. So I'm going to write one routine that's going to handle both the first text box and the second text box. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see. Is operand empty one? So let's write that right away. Private bool is operand not empty, and I will pass in an int which has got the operand. This is going to look very similar to what we've done before. All right, so I'm going to put in here bool retval equal true, and then down here I'm just going to say return retval. That'll get my that'll make my error go away. Okay. So if txt operand one equals double quote double quote retval equal false. False. And again, down here, return retval. So play computer here. And that's dot text. That's why I'm getting the error. This is saying pass this in all right and this will say basically what do i want to do here all right there's a better way of writing this than the way i'm going to show you right now but since we haven't gotten to that point yet i'm going to leave it the way it is so let me modify this to switch on op Case one, um, break. All right. <clears throat> Like I said, there's a better way of doing this than the way I'm showing you right now. But since we haven't talked about that stuff yet, I'm doing it this way. I've never written the code exactly the way I'm writing it right here. So I kind of like it myself. All right. So now I've written a generic function where I'm going to pass. If I pass in a one, it's going to check to see if operand, if the, te the first text box is empty. And otherwise, it's going to check to see if the second one's empty. If whatever one I'm looking at is empty, okay, I'm going to return false, or I'm going to set retval to false. And if neither of these are true, I'll return true. So that's pretty cool, and it fixed that too. All right, now 
I'm going to copy this and I've got to make changes to it, but I want to write my numeric one now. Right? So this is is operand numeric. Okay, all the errors should be gone now. Good, they are. So I'm going to do a switch again. <clears throat> and I need my bool retval. And I need a bool for result. And I need a... Uh, a double for the value. Okay. All right. If it's a one, then I want to say result equals double dot try parse, and I want to parse what's in the first operand, and I want to put the output, I'll put this on another, well, I'll make it a little smaller, there we go, into value. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to do it with operand two. Now, if not result, meaning it didn't work, I'm going to set red file to false. And again, if not result, you can see how this can easily become, oh my God, this, look at, I'm at over 100 lines already. I'm, I'm at, this is going to be 200 some lines when I get done. All right, let's write our routine that's called show message private <clears throat> um show message it's got to be a void sorry private void show message and we will have a string in there for the message and another string in there for the title and we will say message box dot dot show and notice how everything is getting filled in for us right away. And we'll make this an error. So we will put the message, the title, an OK button, and the error. Good. That's all we need for that. So if this didn't work, we want to call show message. All right. And we want to say... Uh, let's see. The string should be operand one, not numeric. And we will add in here, put it on another line because otherwise it'll go off the screen. Non numeric input. Okay. We'll bring this down, and now we'll say operand two, not numeric, non-numeric input. And for this, we're going to say operand one cannot be empty. And here we'll say operand two. Oops, two cannot be empty. All right, now we're not done yet, but let's see if we can test what we have so far. I don't know if we can or not. So I'm gonna come in here, leave that empty. All right, operand one cannot be empty, that's good. So we'll put something in here. Operand two cannot be empty. All right, it's not doing anything else, but that's okay. All right. 
Now, we've handled those. And what do we call this? Is operand not empty? I'm going to change this to is text box not empty and is text box numeric. All right. And you'll see why in a matter of seconds. Well, what do we got left? Is text box not empty? Is text box numeric? Okay. And what else do we have? Here we've got is operand not empty. That should be is text box not empty. And is text box numeric? Okay. Fixed is text box. There. All the errors are gone. Why did I do that? Well, remember, that's an input. That's an input. We've handled those. What about this one? Now we can handle that one too. So I'm going to say. So here we, we came in and we checked our first operand and our second operand. All right, I'm going to make this a three. In fact, I'll leave it at the two. That's okay. But now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to check. So validate, validate first text box, which is operand one. Then we also want to op, we want to validate the second text box, which I'm calling operand two. But in between there, I also want to call if keep going, keep going equal is I don't like to use it that words so let's see I'm gonna write another routine so is text is operator is valid operator all right and again I'll get an error because I haven't written it yet okay else return and again if keep going else return if keep going else return good okay so I'm getting that error is valid operator because I haven't written it yet so I need to write one more routine here private bool is valid operator All right, so let's see. Did I? Where's his valid operator? Okay, so I did set keep going. That's correct. All right, so again, I'll say bool ret val equal true, and I'm just going to return ret val. And the only reason I'm doing that is so the error there will go away. Now, I want to switch. In fact, let's we'll do this. We'll say string. value equals txt operator dot text. We didn't have to do that, but I, I think it'll read a little nicer. So I'm going to do a switch on the value. Okay. Now, if, if we put in here a plus sign, we are going to call, I'm going to grab our code from here that we did before. 
return sum. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, wow. Well, this will allow me to write a real big if statement. If value is not equal to a plus sign oops, and value is not equal to a minus sign and value is not equal to a multiply sign and value is not equal to a divide sign and it's not equal to a modulo that means either it's blank or we put in something that was invalid all right so we're going to put in here our, our show message and it'll say invalid operator in fact we'll have this operator must be plus minus multiply divide or divide or modulo and here we'll put in invalid operator and retval equal false and again we're going to return retval okay so we've now got we have now hopefully at least let's let's check so i will put a number in here and i will put a number in here i'm leaving this blank Oh, I'm not getting my error. I should be. So let's see why I'm not. So, is text box empty? If it's okay, call this. Call is text box, num box numeric. Okay. If it came back and returned that, call is valid operator. Otherwise, return. So, is valid operator. It's not this, and it's not this, and it's not this, and it's not this, and it's not this. Call show message, return red file. What is wrong with that? Nothing I see. TXT. I think that was called TXT operator, was it not? TX. Oh, I didn't put TXT there. I put TX parenthesis. T operator there we go let's try it now put in a number there put in a number there calculate good golly jeffrey why am i not getting that well let's try it like this operand two cannot be empty so it is catching that all right but it is not catching this one so something is hosed all right in that one so see if we can find it I'm sure I'm already butting up on oh my goodness this is going to be the longest one out of all these and I apologize let let me write these how's that um all right If I get down to here, it was all valid. So I'm going to say, um, I call perform operation. Okay. 
this hasn't been written yet. So I'm going to do a switch on the txt operator.txt. If it was a plus, I'm going to call, whoops, oh, I should have put case there and I didn't, that's why I'm getting the error. Case plus and I'm going to call add add the operands and return uh, and break Let me grab all this if it is a minus I'm going to call subtract the operands. If it is a multiply, I'm going to call multiply the operands. If it is a divide, I'm going to call divide the operands. And if it's a modulo, I'm going to call modulo the operands. And if it's anything else, I'm just going to break. There we go. Okay. So none of these are written, right? So let's go to add the operands. And we will return. in my clear routine. What are you thinking, Jeffrey? This has got to be clear. Here we go. All right, that should go in here, perform operation, and it's going to be missing a curly brace. There we go. So add the operands. So I'm going to have to pass num1 and num2 to all these because of the way I wrote it.
Now for the divide and the modulo. If you remember this from when we did it over here, we have to basically do this. We'll just get rid of that for now. All right, and then finally for the modulo, Hopefully, I've gotten rid of most of this, so let's subtract the operands, yeah. Um, let's see. I'll have to make another variable here that's called answer. Set all these equal to answer. Now, the good news is, if I haven't screwed anything up, all right, so it doesn't still doesn't like this answer. Subtract the operands, multiply the operands, divide the operands, add the operands. Somehow I lost my subtract. There it is. Don't know how that happened, but... So there's my add. There's my subtract. And there's my multiply. There's my divide. There's my modulo. Why am I getting these? Double answer. Answer equal. Oh, I've got to pass these N1 and N2 every time. All right, I'm almost finished. Okay, equals zero. All right, I have no errors. Let's just try it and see what happens. I'm going to use the example that they give, and that is not that one. So let's look at this. 86 divide and 11.11 .11. calculate. Well, it gave me zero. The good news is it didn't blow up. The bad news is I didn't get the right answer. So let's try this. Let's just try plus and see if we get a zero for everything. That worked. And it looks like it's correct. The minus. That worked, and it looks like it's correct. The multiply, I'm going to guess that's correct. So that since the divide didn't work, probably the, mod, the modulo probably won't work either. Modulo worked. Huh, just the divide did not work. So let's look at that one. All right, and then we will come back. I will create one more short lecture, hopefully where I'll explain everything that's going on in here. So let's look. Ah, that would do it. Let's try it again. So 45, 7, oops, 7. There's a divide that worked. There is a modulo, and that should be 3, I think. Yep, there's a 
plus, there is a minus, there is a multiply. All right, so the calculator is totally working. I'll have to check my air conditions, etc., and I will come back and do that. Apologize for the longness of this.